the world's in absolute chaos right now. Like we're going from Bryson Hon, being Bryson Hon, to communing with the dead. I told you this community with the dead necromancy thing was not gonna go well. Danica really didn't tell Bryce shit. Where the hell have you been? Oh my god, what if they're robots? Did she really actually just walk into the TVA? <laughs> King Al. Hi, I'm Kat, and House of Sky and Breath was released yesterday. My original plan was after work to like leave work in time to get to the bookstore to grab my copy but ended up leaving work late. But good news, we're working from home for the rest of the week. So I'm gonna go make a sneaky visit to it when it hits nine, so in about 19 minutes, and go grab my paperback copy. I do have the tour edition hard copy on the way, and it has left London, but I have no faith in Australia Post. They will leave it sitting in like a Melbourne warehouse for two weeks. So I'm gonna go get the paperback so I can read it. Saying that, I am still in the middle of my reread of Earth and Blood, because not very far. I'm like, like a whole book's worth in like over 300 pages. And that's not even halfway. Yeah, 302. I read very slowly now. So I'm gonna finish reading this before I read Sky and Breath. And this vlog here will not be just me talking about my reading. I just really want to encapsulate Bryce's vibes. So throughout me reading the rest of Earth and Blood and Sky and Breath, I'm going to, you know, do some things that have Bryce vibes. Maybe I'll paint my nails because I'm not going to go out and get my nails done. Maybe I'll go for a run. Maybe I'll go for a walk. Next week, I'll go to work and dress up a bit. I will not be dressing exactly like Bryce because I do not own those clothes but I'll dress with Bryce inspired vibes. So let's go. My local bookstore knows me too well. I walked in and they like said my name cause it was on hold. And they were like, oh, we were expecting you to be banging down the door yesterday. Cause I told them I was gonna come in yesterday. And that was like a week ago. So they remembered, but it is in my hands now. And it's big. Now time to work for eight hours. I would also like to point out that I went to the post office today and picked up this. Yeah, we're gonna have the whole squad at the 18 plus Wiggles show next month. Bryce adjacent activity of the day. I am going to a class that is at a theater, which does also have dance classes, but I'm going there for acting, not dance, because I can't dance. So I am counting this as like a part one of book one Bryce-like activity. Our homework from acting class this week is to observe a character that is very different to us and see how they move and talk and interact with people and stuff. So let's go Bryce. The next day. The next day. It's Sunday now, and I still haven't finished rereading House of Earth and Blood. I still haven't gotten to this one yet but I will finish it today but I because I spent most of yesterday reading it but I do have adult things I need to do today I'm gonna go grocery shopping which is something that Bryce does in book one and I do need to call my mom at some point my mom who lives in a different city than I do so that is very Bryce like but for grocery shopping I did dress up in one of the Bryce outfits that I actually can dress up in because I own those clothes so I've got the white t-shirt, the black leggings, and sneakers. You know, what she's wearing in her final battle outfit. The only difference is mine comes with one of these. Not much.
I'm always finished with House of Earth and Blood and I got to the Harbour's part at the end again. And it's just as emotional this time. Maybe even more emotional because I know what's coming. <gasps> Why? Just finished my reread of House of Earth and Blood. And whew, those last 300 pages. Whew. Yeah, cried again. Even though I knew what was happening. So now time to finally start this one. So it's slightly longer than this one. By like one page. Wow. This is this is more than one page thicker than this. Cause this said eight hundred and three, and that's at eight hundred and four. I kind of have no idea what to expect in here. Like, so they're gonna keep things platonic until the solstice, and then they're probably gonna join the rebel movement. But I have no idea what else to expect. Like, there'll be some smut and some big fights and some emotional things and it's the second book in a trilogy so the ending's probably gonna hurt. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. My meal delivery kit was supposed to, my meal kit delivery was supposed to arrive today, like it does every Sunday. And then they text me and we're like, oh, sorry, we got no drivers, we'll give it to you tomorrow. Good thing I'm working from home tomorrow, otherwise it could be a box of food sitting in front of my apartment for eight hours. So, you know, in book one, there's a scene where Bryce has carrots and hummus, so I'm gonna start this time. I have work all week, like this coming week. So it'll be slow going till the weekend. Probably won't finish it until the weekend so I can fully emotionally process. On the back of this, like the tagline also says, the deadliest power, the fiercest passion, the cruelest fate. The cruelest fate? In, in this one, they mentioned like a fate crueler than death and how's this going to end, Sarah? Like this one, this one is probably gonna hurt because that's what her books do. But I've like, she seems to have a penchant for Sarah, like, but Sarah seems to have a penchant for happy endings. So I just hope it has, will be all resolved in book three, whatever happens. Um, I do also have the, like the conversation with Sarah J Maas to watch. And I know it's supposed to be spoiler free, but I don't want to watch it until I finish this so I can like fully understand everything she's saying. Did hear that she was working on Crescent City 3 instead of the next Akatar book, which I'm actually okay with because I would need the next book in this series before I need the next book in the other series. And then I have to change my reminders to unmute a few people from Twitter. I have been avoiding opening anyone's Instagram stories and I've muted a few people on Twitter because they haven't been able to hold back from like their feelings. I, I saw like one word relating to the book and I was like, nope, mute. I love you, but I don't want any spoilers. And that includes if like someone liked the book or not, because like if you just tweet like I finished this book, oh my God, the feels, that's a spoiler to me because if you're, if I know you, then I know what you like and shut up. I know what you, I know what you like and I know if my reading tastes align with yours and I know like what type of things would have to happen to hit you in the feels. So that's all spoilers. So I have a few people to unmute when I finish this. So I'm going to eat and I'm going to start it. So that prologue seemed like it was from a completely different series <laughs> like my first the first thing I said was who the fuck is Sophie and now we don't have Sophie anymore but I respected her 
So I'm guessing we'll see her brother and the rest of them show up to our main characters at some point during this book. Yeah, interesting that we saw Pangera, but we didn't get a map of Pangera. That would be helpful. They were like, oh yeah, we're half an hour from this place. I don't know where this place is. Oh, and like the whole Thunderbird thing. We're introducing a new species now, but also are they related to Hunt somehow because of the lightning? This, was this father a Thunderbird? Definitely thinking about like the- Thunderbirds are go. Are we, are we gonna learn about Hunt's parentage? But also like Sophie was mentioning that her great grandmother from like 150 years ago or something was a Thunderbird. Maybe Hunt had a kid at some point that he didn't know about. Yeah, maybe. Or he has siblings. Sarah, you cut off Hunt's hair. Like, I know it's not completely, completely short. Um, and Bryce apparently tried to stop it. So. What the fuck is that about? Why couldn't you let him keep his hair? He's got long hair here. So why the fuck was it cut off? Grow it back immediately, please. If you can grow back your limbs and your wings in a few weeks, grow your goddamn hair back. Fury and Juniper moved in together. I'm so happy for them. They better make it through everything. Okay, it's Monday morning and I need to start work soon. Well, like now. But I had a theory about the prologue last night because it's not explicitly stated that it's happening in the same timeline that the rest of the story is. I mean, it very well could be and Sophie could just be a new character and she could be dead by now and everyone else could be coming to meet the rest of the crew. But... What if this is a character we already know? Like, we know nothing about Fury. Is Sophia Fury? I'm sure she gets thrown over the boat into the water with, like, cement on her feet and stuff. But we know Fury's not quite human, and she's a veneer of whatever type that we don't know. So maybe she gets out of this, and that's her. Because we know that this person was a human who made the drop, who was also a Thunderbird. Could Fury be a Thunderbird? Rune Danner knew three things with absolute certainty. First, Edward was a vampire. Second, there was a part of him, and I didn't know how potent that part might be, that thirsted for my blood. And third, I was unconditionally and irrevocably in love with him. Okay, so because I want to, you know, properly track my thoughts and feelings, I'm only reading like a chapter or two a night until the weekend when it's getting tough. So the chapters I just read, I th the juxtaposition is so funny because it's like this, this portal opens up and it looks like it's to hell, but it's not. And then this big fey warrior guy comes out and it's like, I'm here to grab my future bride. And then Bryce is standing there in like a t-shirt, shorts, a backwards cap and uh, like a lighting what are they called the, the glow sticks around her arm and you know after he leaves everyone's like no one better post any of that to social media i just i love that it's like this big epic like fey marriage portal thing and it's like don't post it to socials oh fury he's a bionic so I just use scratch. I am not good at presentation. I'm sorry, Kat. I know I said you were in with a chance, but then Aaron showed up and said, It's okay. Seven o'clock, so if you'd like to start having a bit of a stretch, I'll get it around. Only 10.30 a.m. on a Thursday. How is this week going so slowly? <sighs> Just want it to be the weekend already so I can read. And this is why I bought the paperback from my local bookstore. So this is the tracking information for my tour edition of Sky and Breath. Tuesday, 15th of February. It arrived in Melbourne. 
It's the 24th. Like it went through the rest of the world super quickly and it's been sitting in Melbourne since the 15th. Literally knew that was gonna happen. I don't have any faith in the Australian postal system. But like the rest of the world, I'm like, yeah, that won't, that won't take long, but it'll sit in Melbourne for two weeks. Now it's only 2.30. I still have two hours left of work. Like my brain shut off at like 10.30 this morning. My favorite part of the day. And then I reopen it because I have a lot of stuff that I want to do myself on the laptop. The world's in absolute chaos right now and like stress is happening, but this arrived. So, you know, let's open my silly little book while the world is falling apart around us. It's the tour edition. It's so pretty. On the back it says light it up. I am a little, I don't have the tour edition of the first book. I do have the regular hardcover. I am a little annoyed that these don't match though. It only stayed in Melbourne for like a week and a half, which is slightly quicker than I thought it would be. There's, there's Hunt. I am still wondering why Hunt has two different colored eyes. I'm not gonna look any further into it to see if there's any extra things. It does have a, um, bookmark ribbon thing, but I'm not gonna open that because I don't want any spoilers. It is Saturday now and I haven't read like all week because I wanted to be able to record my reaction and like, appropriately react. I've also kind of been like terrified to read because I don't know what's going to happen in this book and when I finish it I'm gonna have to wait so long for the next one. But you know got my chocolate croissant here. Today is dedicated to just reading. I have no other plans. I'm gonna read. If I finish today cool. If I don't I will finish tomorrow but tomorrow's reading will be broken up a bit because I need to go grocery shopping and I might be meeting Kate. So this week things in the world got even worse than usual and I was like oh yeah I'll just go and read my book to escape our reality and go into someone else's reality. The, the overarching story is we're focusing on people in one country who are like living their lives pretty much as normal like they've gone through some traumatic things but they're just there you know living their lives having a good time and overseas there's a country that's in the middle of war and there's bombs going off and people trying to escape and things are terrible over there yeah So let's kind of hope for more like fey, angel, romance and smut than our world. Okay, Tharian now has his own point of view and it, apparently it's been two weeks since Sophie was dropped into the ocean and Tharian did mention about Victoria and Micah and Bryce. So it's all happening in present day. So my theory of it being, of Sophie, so my theory of Sophie possibly being Fury didn't work out. Hypatia's half-sister is the hind. I thought they were all, I thought she was an angel, but no, she's half-witch. With no witch powers apparently though. Interesting. Is this going to be like another Shahir and whatever her name was thing with Hypatia and the hind? I hate the Autumn King. But, theory on how the book is going to end, Bryce will end up in Avalon with Cormac and then like the wedding thing will almost go ahead, it won't end up going ahead. But she'll be over there being like a spy or something like that, you know, a la Thera in Akamath. Akamath. Okay, who's making that mug? Because I would buy it. Thank you. Too soon. Didn't need those feels. So there's been another place mentioned, Nena, and 
I, I need a full map of this world, Sarah. Like, we just got the same map of Lunathon again with some extra, like, places marked. But no. Show me where exactly Pangaria is. Where is Nena? Where is Bryce's hometown? Show me the maps. Cormax shown up and said that his oracle said he was destined to unite with a princess who possessed a star in her heart that our mingling would bring, bring great prosperity to our people. Sure, it sounds like Bryce, but... Sophie? Is Ethan now YN? I, like, I know that's probably, like, you know. But I, I read that as your name. Ethan is YN confirmed. I have had multiple pages like this. Who messed up this book so badly when making it? Like, I can still read it, which is good, but... I hope there's no pages missing. The Hellhound was, like, glad somebody finally put a bullet through Micah's head. I think he's gonna be on our side in the end. Like, even though he has that scar that Hunt gave him and, and he worked for Sandriel. I remembered her name because it was said. And, like, he said to have been a bad guy, but he never tortured Hunt. Um, and I think he might end up being on our side. Pollux, on the other hand, can go to hell. We've been hearing a lot about this, like, old god. I'm gonna, just going to call him Thor because... It is Thor, it's just spelled T-H-U-R-R. -R. It could be like Thur, Thur, Thur. I'm just gonna call him Thor, because Thor. And there's this Project Thor thing between Sophie and Danica, and it's got to do, it has to do with the Thunderbirds, right? Maybe they're descendant from Thor. <gasps> do you reckon Thor could be Hunt's dad? Oof. Tharian's point of view here just giving us all the info dumps. I love that we have Ethan here now because he is going to be the one to go on with Bryce's crazy plans because Hunt and Rune are like, no Bryce. And then like she turns to Ethan and she's like, what about you? And he's like, yeah, I'm in. So we just had Bryce hanging out with like six different males. It's there's so, there's so many males in this book. Can we see more of Bryce hanging out with, you know, her best friends, Juniper and Fury? Can we get more of females? So Sarah is literally just writing in all this merch, like, that we can make in there. So who's going to make this t-shirt? Finally, thank God you're here. Danica was a bloodhound and she could smell whose bloodlines like people were in. So she could have known about Bryce the entire time. Danica knew what Fury is. And ah, oh, now I really wish that we had Danica and Hunt together so we could learn quicker about Hunt's heritage Bax Baxian? Baxian? I don't know how to pronounce it properly. Um, his nickname is the Hellhound and he can turn into a wolf. Is Danica a half angel? Now I'm relating to Tharian. I too would love to own Bryce Quinlan's apartment, but sure as shit don't make enough to afford it. I don't even make enough to afford renting a two-bedroom place. Cormac is Silverbow from the prologue. So he went and got Sophie, right? Sophie's fine. This completely changes my theory of it being like an Akomath style ending. Because Cormac is now at our side? <sighs> yeah, now I'm back to not having a clue how this could end. Something really intense involving the rebels and the Asteri. If this was ever adapted, how the hell would you like film that prologue then to avoid the like the reveal happenings because like you can't show his face in the prologue because that would like ruin the reveal when we first see Cormac and then and then you can't not show his face because everyone would be like that's suspicious that's weird and then put things together before the reveal 
okay, maybe it will end with Bryce and Cormac going to Avalon and, like, all of that shit. But they're both in on it. Maybe that's how it's gonna end. Wait, I literally said it before. Said he was destined to unite with a princess who possessed a star in her heart that our mingling would bring, bring great prosperity to our people. Sure, it sounds like Bryce, but... Sophie? Oh my god. They, they're meant to be together. And they were together. Somehow I knew, but I didn't know. Yep, Bryce and Cormac are making a deal to, like, pretend to be engaged and then, you know, cut off the engagement when it's time and then she's gonna train with him for her powers and they're gonna swap information. So they're gonna go undercover together at some point, probably near the end. And then the beginning of the third book, Hunt and Bryce will probably be split up. I hate when that happens. Yeah, really far away from each other. Leathery wings, like bat wings. Yeah, so when can we get rid of Pollux? Because he's even worse than he was before. So Rune, like, thinks that Agent Daybright is familiar. And she is, like, made of flames. And that's all we know about her is Daybright and flames. Do we know her? I mean, it would be hella cool if it was Aelin. Did Cormac winnow? Okay, Tharian, I like you, but do we need so much of your point of view? Can we just go back to Bryce and Hunt? Why was Cassian bragging about holding a five-minute plank when Bryce is doing it right now? Okay, so she didn't hold it for the full five minutes, but two minutes, 15 seconds is pretty impressive since I did this, this part is me. Bryce just gets more and more relatable. So Bryce just thought of the White Raven again. And all this time, they're like, oh, is he is the kid in the meat market? Is he in the bone quarter? I'm like, oh, don't, I forgot the wording for it, but don't sad people go to clubs. I was like, is the White Raven that he's going to go to? So will we find him at the White Raven? Will we find him at the right? Wow. Will we find him at the White Raven? Shahar had never said I love you to hunt. Knew I didn't like her. But the rest of it, I'm like, this, like, there's like a bit of like, oh, that's so sweet. Oh my God. But then also where they are and what's happening. I can't. I ain't calling you a truther. Okay, Danica is not half angel. She's half dread wolf because her father is Mordok. Mordok, yeah. Who is the Heinz second in command. Cool. Sabine, great taste in men. Hunt's got like lightning all around him and Bryce was thinking about that statue of Thor in the theater. So still thinking there's something like a father or maybe grandfather or just anywhere in the lineage. lineage. <laughs> oh, feels. It is 9.30 p.m. and I am only on page 380 or something like that. So I'm definitely not finishing this today, so I'm going to put it down and then pick up again tomorrow. I'll have even less reading time tomorrow, so who knows if I'll finish it then. But... <sighs> Meeting the in-laws. Okay, new theory, because Bakshin and Sabine seem to know each other and, you know, he's still called the Hellhound. Um, so, in like, if he's related to Danica somehow, he's not her father. Maybe he's her grandfather? So Rune is talking to Daybright, and I feel like they're building up to something that could potentially end up being, like, a romantic thing when they do meet one day. But I genuinely thought there was going to be something with him and Hypatia, like, proceeding on from the last book. But we haven't seen her once here. What happened to Hypatia? I'm heading out for a Bryce activity where I am meeting a friend for lunch, and my outfit is only slightly... Bryce inspired because I don't have any tight fitting skirts or dresses except for one pencil skirt and that just feels weird to go meet my friend for a Sunday lunch with so I have I'm sure Bryce owns black tank tops I have this skirt which is flowy 
because it's all I've got. And then I got boots on. And then my most priced thing is going to be what I'm wearing in place of her amulet, which is the closest thing I have to it. This is like the Helios, I think it is, necklace from Stellar and the Moon. actually socializing. <laughs> So this is why I'm not the biggest fan of like the so many perspectives in it because we just had this huge intense moment between Bryce and Hunt finally getting it on and then Bryce teleported for the first time and then oop, now we're over back with Flynn, who else is there, Rune and Ethan getting to know some fire sprites like I just I want to stay with Bryce and Hunt for now okay? Yeah, Sophie's dead. That's sad. Is Daybright somehow Hypatia? Bryce pulling an alien by, you know, setting everything up like 300, 400 pages ago. And now we're getting the reveal that she did something we didn't see. That's such an alien move, Bryce. Okay, Danica's riddle was about the meat market, not the White Raven, but it would have been cool if it was the White Raven. Bryce is having Fury drive a meal somewhere where it's going to be a long ride. Is he going to her parents? Yep, he's going to her parents, but she went one stop further. They're adopting him! Emil's now Bryce's younger brother. That's so cute. Convenient that a dragon, which is the only thing that can burn even the prince of the pits hide, just happened to show up at this moment. But I am on page... And I am on page 557. I still have like 250 pages left. It is like 9 p.m. on Sunday, and once again, I am not going to finish this tonight. So, I have work tomorrow, and we're actually back in the office. So it'll be an after work, come home, and hopefully smash out the rest of that thing. Why does everyday work and adulting have to get in the way of doing things I actually enjoy? It's 5.11 p.m. Let's go. Hi, Patia. How lovely for you to join us finally on page 563. Where the hell have you been? Hi, Patia has a gift of necromancy. Are we getting Sophie back? I don't see Hi, Patia calling Connor going well. Oh, yeah, it's happening on the autumnal equinox. That's not going to go well. I feel like that's where our big battle at the end of the book is going to happen as well. Bryce wants to talk to another female. Well, there would be more females to talk to if you introduced more female characters than male characters because there's so many goddamn males in this series. But it looks like she's going to talk to Hypatia and like, no, we could have had Hypatia this whole time. We've gone like 600 pages without her. Wait, so Rune and Hypatia don't want to marry each other even though I was sure something was going to build there because, you know, they were liking each other in the first book. But now Hypatia is going to be taking care of Ethan. Are we going to get Hypatia and Ethan? Everyone was talking about like planning for the ball and everything and then suddenly it's like two weeks later and we're here. So this entire section here I think is pretty much going to be all like Equinox Ball. Because it's not a fantasy book until they go to a masked ball. Daybright is the hind. Like, it hasn't been confirmed yet, but it's got to be the hind. What? What? Hmm. I don't think she's redeemable. And I thought there was going to be some sort of romance brewing here, but... Oof. Hey, Patia and Celestina. Celestina? I don't know how to pronounce it properly, but... Ooh. Okay. Power couple if there are rolls one. 
but a power couple that can't be together. And it's like just love that Bryson Hunt was sneaking away to go do what they were going to do and they find someone already doing that. Is Bryce the seventh asteroid? Okay, it's three in the morning on the night slash morning of the autumnal equinox and it's definitely not the end of the book because I still have a hundred pages left. So while there was some hell yeah moments and some big reveals, the equinox was kind of anticlimactic. Bryce and Hunt are talking about being married and for fuck's sake, Sarah, like, can we get one goddamn wedding in any of your books? Just want to see one of them. Why do we always miss them? What, what happened at your wedding, Sarah, that you, like, just don't want to show weddings in your books? The whiplash we are getting with the point of views here. Like, we're going from Bryce and Hunt, being Bryce and Hunt, to communing with the dead. Just less point of views, because if it ends up, you know, Kingdom of Ash level of point of views, no. I told you this communing with the dead necromancy thing was not gonna go well. Before they went into the temple, Pollux and Mordak were mentioned, just hanging around with their dreadwolves, and I love that I was like, oh yeah, the enemy of my enemy, and look who showed up. So Bakshin is not Danica's grandfather. Danica really didn't tell Bryce shit, did she? Some friend she was. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna need that on a mug too. Fuck you forever. Also, it was there the whole time. Okay, Bryce has just entered like the Asteroid Palace and there's like um pipes with the names of the Asteroid, which I, I'm assuming the Asteroid on them. And my brain just went, oh my god, what if they're robots? Bryce just walked into a room where there's like a round table and a projection device. Does she really actually just walk into the TVA? If the demons are the good guys, why have they been killing, like, non asteroid? Could this be Prithian and the Night Court? I'm not sure about the, like, near permanent twilight thing, but that could just be Night Court because they have day and night there. I know it's supposed to be like, oh my god, all of this information is coming out now. But I'm kind of finding it funny. That we were like, oh, Sarah Dumas is writing a book that has more than just Fae in it. No, the shifters, they're Fae. The mermaids, they're Fae. Everyone's Fae. Or a demon. Oh, wait, wait, oh, wait, wait, wait. The Dusk Court that we've been wondering where it's at? Because we've got night, day, and dawn, and we're like, where is the Dusk Court at? There she is, there's the hind revealing that she's day and she's saving our main crew in the process. A male with great black wings, scarred hands, petite dark head female with angular eyes like fury. Another winged male. Pretty female with brown gold hair. That's real blade. Her hands are tattooed. Fucking knew it. Nix, isn't it? It's a race.
fucking hell. I need to finish the page. I need to finish the goddamn page. I don't give a shit about Ethan right now. I'm not even fucking paying attention to this epilogue. Just what the fuck? Okay, that epilogue, we didn't need it. I was barely paying attention and it was pointless because it was that last Bryce chapter that was the important one. Whew. So like, we, we've been looking for crossovers the whole time and I thought it was just gonna be slight crossovers. But that's some straight up like multiverse of madness shit. So now like you have to read the books in publication order, otherwise you're going to be spoiled. Oh, I never thought we'd actually have our main characters from across the series talk to each other. Just thought they would be like descendant from each other, which they are. Because Rune is descendant from Reese and Vera. But also at this point, you've got to look at me and tell me that what's her name, the Hind, is not descendant from Aelin. Because she looks like Aelin. Her representation in the bridge is of fire. And she's the daughter of a stag shifter. Stag, Terrazin. And, and Rowan is a shifter himself. Holy shit. Did not expect crossovers that big. I wonder how important they're going to be in the next series. Can we, can we get Aelin and Rowan up in here as well? Because then we can have like all of them together. Whew. Multiverse. Now I'm going to go watch the conversation with Sarah J Maas thing, which I know is supposed to be spoiler free, but I wanted to wait until after the, I finished the book. Whew. Okay, like obviously I'm going to give the book five stars. I do think we could have done without Tharian's point of view and maybe even Ethan's. The epilogue was pointless because no one was paying attention. I am perfectly okay with these books being hella long because I love these characters. I just wish I didn't feel the need to rush through the books to avoid getting spoiled. Because I have a few people muted online and I'm barely open Instagram because I was terrified of being spoiled. And I bet you there is spoilers out there because that was a big fucking ending. I started filming the moment she was like, there's grass here and this guy has like bat wings or she said leathery wings. And I was like, it's one of our boys. I'm also kind of on the edge of like including the Akatar crew in this because it's just going to take away from the Crescent City crew, everyone's gonna be like, oh my god, the Akatar crew is here, and it's gonna be all about them. But also I love that everyone's getting together. But else, while I still have thoughts going through my head, um, I really wish we had more of Fury and Juniper, like, they're her best friends, why aren't we seeing more of them? Why are they not helping her like the rest of them are helping her? I mean, it definitely ended nowhere near what I thought it was gonna end like at the beginning, though, though I did I did say it was going to end in an Akumaf way. So apparently I was more on point than I thought I was. Bloody hell, I was even using a bookmark with Feyre. She's in there, you can't see her. And then A Court of Wings and Ruin written on the back. Apparently it's all in the same goddamn world now. Hey, and welcome everyone to a very exciting event. I'm Catherine Weber, I'm a YA author, and most importantly, a very big fan of Sarah J. Maas, and it is my great pleasure to introduce Sarah. Thoughts I'm having because I'm still thinking about the series. This is hours later. It's like 12.30 at night. But they, they were speaking, Bryce was speaking a different language to our Akatar crew. And then Amron was like, people haven't spoken the old language in a long, here in a long time. The old language. Okay. So I was thinking that like Rune and Bryce and everything were descendant from our main characters. But maybe they're not. Maybe they came from before like their ancestors whatever her name was and her daughters came from before and then they're just they're split off so they're like cousins instead of descendants interesting
timelines are going to be interesting as well. Like, it, is Reese and Feyre going to learn what a mobile phone is? Okay, I'm going to go put my books away now. Um, let me know in the comments what you thought of the book. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. And here's more of them. I don't know which direction it's in. Whew.